When you think of the most interesting object in the universe, what do you think of? Galaxies, stars, planets perhaps? But most people would usually say the black hole. This intriguing object has continued to pique interest, such as when the image of M87 was released. But why? Why do we come back to this object if we know everything about it? Well, the thing is, we don't. We don't know everything there is to know, and there are many competing theories. So let's debunk the myths and theorize exactly what would happen to you if you were to fall into a black hole. Hi, it's Cosmic Fury here, and I post weekly videos on all things astronomy and cosmology. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Black holes are objects with gravity so strong that not even light can escape. To produce this gravitational pull, they have to be extremely dense. For reference, if you wanted to turn the Earth into a black hole, you would have to squish it into the size of a pea, or 9mm across. And when you're stuffing the entire world's mass into this size, strange things are bound to happen. Black holes are like the cosmic vacuum cleaners, sucking in anything that comes too close, even light. But how can this be possible? For this question, we need to explore the concept of escape velocity. Everything in the universe, all the stars, planets and galaxies, have gravity. The escape velocity is the speed required to break out of an object's gravitational pull. On Earth, the speed required is 11.2 km a second while the sun's escape velocity is 618 km a second. But for light to be pulled into the black hole, then the escape velocity must be greater than the speed of light. And this is exactly what happens. The distance where the escape velocity reaches the speed of light is known as the event horizon. This is why black holes are black. No light can make it back out of the black hole at this point, so you can't see anything but how can an object have such an extreme gravity in the first place? Well, black holes are formed from the death of a supergiant star. Most of a star's life consists of fusing hydrogen into helium to produce energy. Pressure provides an outward push, while gravity keeps the star together. As a star runs out of hydrogen, it will begin fusing helium into heavier elements, such as carbon, oxygen and silicon. This is all fine and well for a few years, but as the heavier elements build up in the core, the star begins to lose its stability. In a last-ditch effort, the star fuses silicon into iron to try and maintain outward pressure. But this is the beginning of the end for the supergiant. At this point, the star can no longer sustain its own weight, and the outer layers burst outwards in a violent explosion, while the inner layers collapse at speeds of 70,000 km a second. If the mass is high enough, then no force in the universe can stop the collapse, and the inner layers compress into what is known as a singularity, the beginnings of a black hole. This point of infinitely dense matter is what creates the immense gravity that pulls everything in, and thus the black hole is formed. This process only happens for stars, with cores that are twice the mass of the sun. Now that you have background on what a black hole actually is, it is time to find out what the inside of the black hole looks like, and what you would find. Let's dive into one to find out. Let's say you had a hypothetical spaceship that could survive the black hole's gravity, and has a way to escape. Obviously, this isn't possible, but let's roll with it anyway. You decide to venture inside the black hole in your spaceship in the name of science. Let's say you chose the supermassive black hole in the centre of the Milky Way, Sagittarius A. But why would we choose the largest black hole in the galaxy? Why not a smaller one? Well, this is because of a phenomena known as spaghettification, and yes, that is actually the scientific word for it. Spaghettification happens because of the immense gravity in a black hole. The difference of pull between your head and your feet is so large that you are literally stretched out like spaghetti. In larger black holes, such as Sagittarius A, however, spaghettification doesn't happen immediately, because the event horizon is a lot further away from the singularity. In a small black hole, the event horizon and singularity are a lot closer, so you would be a strand of goo before you could even hope to reach the black hole. As you approach Sagittarius A, 
you would see some strange phenomena. The first is known as gravitational lensing. This occurs because the gravity from the black hole not only affects matter, but light as well. If you look at stars just around the event horizon, you will see that they are distorted and bend around the black hole. The stars to your left and right will also become much brighter as you approach. This is because the black hole is sucking in all the light from distant galaxies, and they begin to blue shift due to the Doppler effect. As you approach the black hole, the stars behind become increasingly bright, and the light in front of you more and more distorted. If you look back just before you cross the event horizon, you will see the entire universe compressed into one tiny point. But there is something else strange about it. The universe would seem to speed up as you cross the event horizon. Time would run extremely fast outside, and the evolution of the universe would flash before your eyes. Who remembers this image? The cosmic microwave background. Just before you cross the event horizon, the dot will change from red to blue, and the cosmic microwave background will be the last thing you see. And then, suddenly, you have crossed the event horizon, and everything goes dark. You are now inside the black hole, and your scanners detect the singularity ahead. Now that you have seen that there is nothing to see, you decide to turn around and boost out of the black hole in the opposite direction, but there is an error message. Your navigational instruments say that the singularity is in front of you, but that's impossible, you just turned around your spaceship. How can the singularity be behind and in front of you? You turn in all directions, but your instruments continue to tell you that you are heading towards the singularity. You can't escape, and you are doomed to your inevitable death. You see, the problem with diving into a black hole is that once the event horizon has been crossed, every path after that leads to the singularity. If you accelerate away from what you think is the singularity, you will reach the singularity faster than you would have if you had stayed on your course. In fact, for Sagittarius A, it would only take 20 seconds to reach the singularity once you have crossed the event horizon. And that's the truth of black holes. Inside, there is nothing but darkness and gravity. There is no way to escape, even in your hypothetical spaceship. The three-dimensional navigation system that we use simply wouldn't work in a black hole. This is because time doesn't act normally in a black hole. It flows downwards towards the singularity, along with all your possible futures. And in all your futures, you will be crushed or spaghettified by the force of gravity. You are approaching the singularity, and there is no turning back now. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel for weekly astronomy content, and until next time, goodbye.